very much. All right, thanks to Clinton. And uh, I've got one last giveaway related to survey uh, completion. So if Jerome Fleury is in here, you are the winner. Yes, here? OK, come on up. So thanks for filling out the surveys. Uh, it's very much appreciated. And uh, thanks for the sponsorship of that. So our last presentation to close out our, our agenda for today, our program, is uh, closing remarks from Yep, that's yours. Thank you. Uh, it's from Betty Burke, our uh, executive director, and um, some members of the board, I believe, to announce the election results. And uh, after that, there will be a social in Hochelaga ha 1, one of the, the rooms along here that we have had uh, breakfast and lunch all, all the different days. So thanks. As you can tell, I brought some colleagues with me, so we're going to get right underway, and I'm going to have Will do the election results. Good afternoon. Standing. Uh, let me go back. So I want to give the election results, which are right here. I want to thank all the candidates who ran. Uh, I thought we had a, a really good slate, and uh, here's how it came out. We had uh, almost record turnout in these elections. It was record turnout. There you go. 38% uh, voted, um, and the finer victor, victors were uh, Jezebel Gilmore, Ryan Donnelly, and David Tension. Um, Jezebel drew the short straw for the final two-year term, and going forward, we will have uh, two candidates terming out every year, and uh, all will be on three-year terms going forward. I get that right, Betty? Uh, we also approved the revisions to the NANOG bylaws, so uh, from now on our jobs will be easier when we have board elections. Um, we won't have to immediately appoint uh, a new PC. Um, anything else I need to cover? All right, once again, thanks everyone who voted. It's a big deal, and uh, we'll see you next year for another election. Thank you to Will and Dan for willing to for their willingness to serve on the Elections Committee and uh, monitor the process. I wanted to also remind everyone that given the bylaws have been now officially changed, we will be opening nominations for our committee members, uh, both the Program Committee and the Communications Committee, January 1. And they will close on February 1 for appointment by the board in the February meeting. Um, I thought it was important to bring up some colleagues who can talk to you about why you want to volunteer, sort of perhaps the uh, effort that we're asking for and how better to have folks who have been in the job doing it for a while to speak to you. So, Andy? So I'd like to speak to you today as the uh, chairman currently of the Communications Committee. Uh, the Communications Committee here at NANOG takes care of all of our social media posting. Uh, we also take care of moderation of the mailing list. So as uh, new members join our mailing list, uh, we hold their first message just to make sure that uh, uh, the content is valid for the mailing list and then release those to uh, all of you to uh, review and uh, read on the mailing list. We also have members on our committee that uh, serve as mentors to the fellowship recipients here at the NANOG conferences. Uh, the expected time of volunteering for the communications committee is pretty infrequent. Uh, the moderation tasks and postings to the, uh, the, the various different social media sites is, is fairly short. Uh, we do want to Keep in mind that we do it every day, but uh, it's only a few minutes uh, here and there. Uh, and we do have very short uh, uh, conference calls on uh, a fairly infrequent basis, maybe once a quarter or once every other month. Um, and volunteering for this is very important. Uh, we put ourselves as kind of the face of NANOG uh, with our social posting and so forth. 
And the, the mailing list is a very visible portion of the way NANO communicates with our community. So if you are interested in participating as the communications committee, uh, please uh, put in your nominations for uh, either yourself or others uh, before the uh, close uh, starting here in February. Thanks, Andy. And it really is important, following up on Andy's comments, because it is a member, there are members, peers of yours, that are doing this important job. So it really is an, an important NANOG function. They're sort of the unsung heroes, and I really appreciate them. So I'm Michael Sinatra. I'll talk a little bit about the program committee. The program committee at NANOG is in charge of the actual structure and content of the program, and that is pretty much all it does. It pays attention to the content and how it is put on the program for you. We do not do things like budgets, we do not do things like, you know, hotel contracts, that's why we have a board, and that's why we have an executive director. So if you've been on program committees for other conferences where you end up being kind of the jack of all trades, this is good, you get to focus on content, you get to focus on the ideas that people are putting forward and how well they fit with this audience. The amount of time commitment you're going to have, basically what we do is about six, sometimes seven, one-hour meetings um, that run up towards the Nanog cycle, each cycle. That's every four months. Plus, you're going to need to spend about, I would say, four to six hours, about roughly the same amount of time that you would spend in the meetings. You're going to spend that again in doing things like reviewing slides, emailing um, would-be presenters, people who are trying to submit material, uh, reviewing abstracts, doing things like that. It's really not a lot of time when you consider that spread out over the course of four months. When you get here on site, you're going to be spending maybe three to four hours doing things like participating in meetings with other program committee members, participating in meetings with the board, doing some work up here moderating, doing some work at the back table, making sure that the program is getting put on. You'll see me doing a lot of things at the back table. There is also some roles for someone um, in my position, which is the secretary of the program committee, who does things like take meeting notes, make sure all the slides are in place where they should be, make sure that what you see on the screen and what the speaker is speaking about is actually what should be happening at any given moment in the program. So there are opportunities to put a little bit more in, but the basic commitment is what I said before, six hours of meetings, six hours of work outside, and about three to four hours once you're here. It's a lot of fun, it's great, you get to focus on content, you get to focus on good ideas, and you get to do some really good work for the community. Thanks. I wanted to extend a special thank you to Michael because without his engagement in the program committee and all of his time, with me here at this event, you wouldn't have the kind of show that you have in terms of integration with AV and the slides. So thank you very much, Michael, for all that you do for us. So I'll be, I don't know which side to go to. So I'll be quick. It's my traditional closing. I want to again thank all of our premium sponsors who go with us throughout uh, a three meeting series our host for this event, Torex, and to our connectivity partners. Uh, you, you made my job a whole lot easier financially and technically. Thank you. All of these companies on this slide help keep your registration fee down. So they pay for the nice lunches and breakfasts that we they give us the dollars, excuse me, through their sponsorship to pay for the nice lunches and breakfasts and all the other benefits that you enjoy while here at a NANOG meeting. So thank you to all of them. A special thank you to our uh, survey giveaway sponsor, IP3 4 Market Group. Uh, you know, all of our survey, survey giveaway sponsors try to get uh, a little creative and uh, give you an appreciative gift on our behalf. So thank you for providing the uh, Surface 3 tablet. <laughs> Special thank you to all of these folks listed on the slide. I'm not going to list all it and call out all the names, but there is a whole team of folks, both volunteers, paid staff, and contractors who work um, all together to make this meeting happy, happen, so thank you to them. I wanted to, to let you know, uh, give you a little summary detail on the extra folks, that, the extra special folks that we had here at this meeting. 
We have an Abba Ahula Fellowship recipient, two Pastel Scholarship recipients, some NCI participation from UC Boulder, Clarkston, and Marymount. These faculty members are willing to uh, do a little, all, all of the folks here do a little submission. We have a committee that reviews the submissions that come in, and then they coordinate the efforts um, of their students here on site. Special thank you to Stacy Hughes, who served as a mentor to all these folks on behalf of us. Here's the stats, the boring stats. No. <laughs> a bigger meeting, when uh, someone asked me, so you're going to Montreal, how many attendees do you plan on having? I said around 700. It's amazing we had 937 here, so that's a great, great turnout. Um, we had students outside of the NCI program and the fellowship program, but just students from local universities that made it to this meeting for us. Um, let's see, always important, because we talk about diversity in our audience. Uh, that number at the bottom, the female attendance is growing, but it's still a very underrepresented number. So we have scholarships and fellowships, and if folks in those, in, in the industry, in that category, need some assistance, we're here to help. Uh, top countries, not surprising. Top organizations, pretty standard, we've seen that as well. If you, all these stats, by the way, are posted on the website for each meeting so you can go back and do some comparison just to, to see how we've changed. There we go. Um, by org, uh, this is a little interesting to me today in, in terms of seeing how some of the percentages have changed. Um, not much, but, but still different. And the future meeting dates. So I've been really busy trying to catch us up on getting sites selected and contracts booked so that we can have a large meeting in a great venue. So we have a Nanog on the Road, the final one for this year coming up in St. Louis. It's a great uh, event for folks who don't have a large travel budget. Uh, we've seen about 110 engineers come to those local meetings when we have them. So we're expecting a good program and great turnout there. Our February 2016 lineup is already posted on our website and we have hosts identified for each one of those locations. We are in the process of completing 2017 and moving on to 2018. We are going to Washington, D.C. in February. So if anyone is interested in hosting that event, contact me offline. Uh, we're going back to Bell Bellevue, the same location we were at before, this coming, or June 2017, excuse me, another host I, I need. And in October, we haven't inked the contract yet, we're close, but we do know that we're going to San Jose. So good sites, should be really good meetings. With that said, I'm open to any questions, otherwise we can consider this meeting closed and look forward to NANOC 66. Again, a, a final thank you, and I'm really serious about it. NANOG is growing because of your attendance and your engagement in the program and volunteering with the program committee. So you make my job fun by being here, and I hope you had a great time. Thanks.